What's up everybody? Pika out here in Singapore. I'm back again, but this time I have a local entrepreneur that I want to showcase because I think she's doing some tremendous stuff uh, within Ayurveda and beauty as well. So I really want to make sure that we get to see what her journey was like and um, hear from her what what her takeaways were as far as how she got to where she is, how she decided to do, do what she does, and you know if she decided to go the traditional route originally or not. So if you wouldn't mind, I am just going to ask and see if I can find um, the owner of Ancient Touch. Her name is Safina. And so the company's name is Ancient Touch. And if you get a chance, I would love for you to go ahead and search and follow her as well. Um, and let's see here. Real quick, looking for her. But other than that, how are y'all doing? Hi, my your author. How are you? How's your book going? Ayurvedic-based uh, beauty items as well. So stuff like lash serums, uh, balms. Hi there. How are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good, actually. So I know actually right now you're in Brisbane, but you're based in Singapore yeah. usually, correct? Yeah. Very cool. That's correct. So just real quick, were you born in Singapore? You you studied here and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually just in, I'm just in Brisbane for the UD. Okay. Otherwise, I'm actually in Singapore. Cool. Very cool. What are you studying now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm actually doing podiatry. Okay. So it's about the specialization of the lower limb and the foot. Yes. So, yes. How's yeah. that going? I'm pretty busy. I just had exams this week, so um, I really appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> because we've been trying to work around your yeah. study schedule, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah, you couldn't pay me to go back to university. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so podiatry. it's all done now. I had my yeah, I had my exam yesterday, so that's done. I just got one more assignment to submit. And that's about it. And then I've got to catch a flight to Singapore tomorrow night. <laughs> Very cool. So Welcome pretty full back. on. Very cool. So, okay. So this is, you're studying podiatry at the moment, but how did you get into um, business ownership? Like, how did you decide you wanted to go into business for yourself? Where did that start from? Okay. So the thing is, this goes like way back. I had an interest. So it all started with Hannah. Okay. So I've been drawing, you you know, drawing henna. I think all of us have done all of these things when we were young. You know, you go to you the try bazaar, things. you get your henna yeah. done. Yeah, you get yeah. your henna done. So it just kept going there. And then it started like, I tried to, you know, copy what they did on my hand. So that's mm -hmm. how the henna journey started that, I think cool. about 2005 or something like that. And then slowly, I started doing within the family and then friends. And then uh, there was once when I was doing it at, I think a Deepawali open house in my okay. one of my aunt's house. Okay. And somebody paid me. And I was like, oh no, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not doing it for money, you know, I, it's okay. And then they were like, you should, like, you are, this is like a service you're providing and you should, That's true. you know, we have to pay. It's not fair that um, we are just getting it for free. Then I was like, oh, okay. So, because, you know, you don't want to charge family or friends. You just feel I a know. bit awkward when you. But I'm and glad it was, was a family was... friend that decided that, no, you should be paid and it is the right thing to do. And they supported you that way. So then you, you know, you felt Correct. a little bit better. Yeah. So that was, I think, when I was in secondary five. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So That's that awesome. was uh, 17, around there, I okay. think. Uh, so after that, I started to take in like a... Um, just small scale, like whenever it's festive season timings, yes. I just get people to, you know, book appointments if you need to get their henna done over at my place or I go over, go over to their place. So that was just a very small scale. And I was like, okay, uh, I don't want to buy these hennas from uh, shops. I want to try to make them by myself. Like, I don't know what chemicals are going in. So I tried to right, figure out how to do too. this stuff. Okay. And I was getting um, the henna powder just locally, but I realized they were not of very good quality oh. because these are uh, produced in big uh, batches and just for like okay. shops, they are not really of high quality body art uh, standard henna. Okay. So I tried to search, okay, where do I get this from? And I was like, okay, uh, why am I spending money getting all these things outside when I can actually make them myself? Right. So that's when I started to make my own henna and whatever henna related product so and then people started buying from me and I said like, okay um 
I think the best way you start business is when you invest zero dollars in it. Absolutely, so, I totally one hundred percent agree. Y'all listen, yeah. right? You hear this? Do not spend money if you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> so because if you spend like thousands of dollars trying to, you know, um, uh, build your business, that means you have to gain back all these thousands, thousands of dollars before exactly. you even find your profit. Yeah. So in my case, I didn't do that. I just right. I tried to you know reduce that uh investment by making my own stuff yep so that I don't pretty much I don't lose anything <laughs> but that's so, smart I'm glad you said yeah. that out loud <laughs> <laughs> because that's why a lot of people don't realize they get all ambitious by looking at all these you know other uh, big uh business owners or they're like oh maybe you know this looks like it's a very easy thing to do maybe I should do it as well and they end up buying all this stuff and Most is unnecessary, right? I, what I find is yeah. a lot of people are saying they will tell themselves, "Oh, I can't do this until I have that. I can't do this because I don't have that." So, but you could find a way to do it without, right? That's what most of us yeah, who correct. don't have that much money to spend mm-hmm. in the first place will find a way. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you don't want to be broke before you find victory. Of course, so. <laughs> because you'll lose the drive to even do it at that before correct. you even taste profit. You'll be like, oh, "I don't want to do this anymore." I feel I cannot you know and, like you don't yeah. tell yourself stupid things so yeah don't And in this kind of generation if you're not popular if you're not a celebrity if you're not like a social media you know popular on social media or anything like that you're not going to get things advertised as easily so <laughs> Yes and I'm glad you said so that because it doesn't mean that it doesn't it, it can't happen but you only hear about the ones that are popular first You don't hear mm, about the ones like correct. you who are quietly doing, 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 doing every day. You're building your clientele because honestly, I didn't know that you were doing this until my niece Nidila actually said, "Hey, yeah. you should check her out." And I was like, "Oh my gosh, she makes this stuff! I didn't know." So yeah, that's when I started <laughs> harassing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after that, um, so it was just Hannah all along, okay. and then I actually did try like you know all those um. Indian wares I try to bring them in but it wasn't as popular but the thing is I didn't really uh because a lot of people were doing it you know uh, yeah. they brought sarees in they were selling and they were all popular and I was like oh that looks quite easy I probably should do that but this when I was talking about you know how being popular is actually a added boost when yes, you are doing something online so I realized you know what I should just stick to what I am I shouldn't try to you know venture too much and your I time will come I, I promise that. Your yeah. time will come. I I I I think I was doing the Indian ethnic wares for about two three years or something, and then I was like, you know what? Forget it. I don't want to do that. I think I'm more uh, interested in what I you know started off with. Yeah. So I I thought, okay, um, what else can I do that people in Singapore are not actually doing yet? And that's when I thought, okay, why not uh start with you know skincare and all these kind of things because. Yeah. I personally do not like to use things which are too much, uh, you know, ingredients with chemicals. too much chemicals or something unnatural and things like that. I usually try to go with lesser chemicals, even those like off the shelf uh, products, like your oh, yeah. usual toiletries and the, things like that. I've looked at the ingredients and it's like I can't even pronounce yeah. it. What is that? <laughs> Correct. I mean, uh, if you don't want to eat it, you don't want to put it on your body. <laughs> so. <That's okay. laughs> So uh I thought okay why not try this and I have always been DIYing things throughout okay. it, it just right. didn't occur to me that I should probably do it as a business as well uh-huh. so um and you know having indian roots I'm pretty sure it starts off with our families itself like you know yeah. your moms your grandmother they kind of do DIYs in one form yeah <laughs> you know like be a regular face mask or you know hair oils or anything so I was like okay let me try to you know um mix this ayurvedic stuff and science together and try to come up with things which would work and um and yeah so i started off with eyelash serum mm-hmm, I saw and that. then it went to like different different things so uh they are all made by me mm-hmm. and obviously i do my research and try and you know give it give it to some of my family and friends to you know try it out Trust first it, see yeah. if it works and then release it so so right now apart from henna mm-hmm. it has all this skin and body care stuff as well i saw so, and you have yes. an after after henna balm as well and you also do not just like yeah. name the you know the the decorative henna you also do hair henna don't you yeah yeah, that's yeah. Right. okay yeah so yeah with the aftercare stuff it's just like um 
Hannah is how do I put it? It's not just as simple as it is like just you get your Hannah done and you just you know within a few minutes you just get it off and yeah that's about it. It it goes way much more in detail and only if you are really interested in it that's when you are able to appreciate all of those and in that aspect I would say like or brights and they are really concerned about the stain outcome and things like that uh, right. whereas comparing to you know those who are mm, and comparing those who you know just getting it for a festive season or something then they are right. pretty much not going to bother and with that being said there's a lot of um, bad stuff going on with henna Meaning? So because Uh-oh. they have like a instant henna, which yes. is okay, nothing to do with henna. Because henna is like for is a plant based stuff, right? So and it's supposed to you, improve you, circulation for brides so they don't faint on their wedding day. That's generally what it was originally. It's actually very cooling. Yeah, it's yeah. actually something cooling, just that it brings calms them down. Yes. And yeah, so because you know everyone's expecting fast results, so I think yeah. some company decided to you know um, create. instant henna which is basically i think skin like dye which okay. is which dyes your skin right. but um and then there's some other chemicals which are carcinogens as well oh, and awesome yeah so um yeah I, there were it was quite there was a phase like i think 2 3 years ago where this was pretty popular and people are getting blisters and scabs and oh, all wow. these horrible things on their hands Uh-huh. uh because they were going for this alternative instead of the natural version right because what this does is they get it done within 5 minutes you wash it off and that stain is like dark maroon um whereas before so it was like was you put the hen on you're supposed to wait and when you wash it up you see like what was that thing that your yeah. all the aunties would say oh, you, this means you will be very fertile or some nonsense i don't know but it was like you had to wait uh, for a while know. right <laughs> i think there's a lot of folklore <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just funny but it used to be that you had to wait which means you couldn't do anything you just yeah, had to yeah, sit here correct. with your hands and, and stuff will, right yeah yeah and then it would develop the stain would develop over time right so yeah with <laughs> all these uh, companies and how it was meant to be when they all clash together things just end up bad so yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of like uh, yeah so a lot of people still do it okay uh, like even beauty parlors celebrities and all these people they still I'm sure I'm sure it's because it's fast that. and because it's cheaper because it's mass produced yeah. right Yeah and the thing is those um who are very loyal towards <laughs> henna mm-hmm. and the uh, uh art and the tradition behind it they all are very against this um instant henna black henna and all these kind of things and every festive season they all the henna artists they always promote saying you know be careful when you go to all these bazaars because yeah. um you know that is what they're going to put on you because every anyone can be a henna artist all they need is just a coat and right. whether they are truly an artist or they're just there to get money off you yeah. you only know after they have drawn right. on you and that's probably too late <laughs> right exactly <laughs> so it's quite a scary thing whenever it's this um the uh, Hari Raya Bazaar or Deepavali Bazaars and things like that yeah it's yeah so that is the especially now since it's Hari Raya soon right um people are still getting scammed by these people uh, uh. you know trying to claim as henna artists and then uh they get probably a 2 year old who do a better job <laughs> and actually my daughter has asked can we go do henna but we might experiment at home first but i i will need to consult you before we we do anything so <laughs> that that's on the books right. already cuz i mean june holiday she has nothing better to do but to explore art so oh, she's okay. very artistic so that would be something we come to oh, okay mm-hmm. so yeah, okay yeah, yeah. so I'm henna having the open house for henna for haria next week right exactly so very probably good. you can bring your daughter if she's if she wants cool. <laughs> uh, yeah i would yeah. definitely bring her by and then we'll make sure that we promote you as well so for those of you listening we do have <laughs> an open house coming up so you can actually meet um uh this this young lady right in person and actually ask her about all of her her good so i'm curious you you do a lot of different things it's not just the cones it's not just the hair the the yeah. skin beauty all of that how do you keep inventory uh it's pretty much a one man show over here <laughs> so everything at home is it yes it's at wow. home uh because whenever i'm away 
Mm. I actually put it in my sister-in-law's house. Okay. So she helps me to just like if to somebody were to the... come over to um she pretty much just helps me with the delivery part. Okay. Uh okay. like post stage or you know somebody mm. whenever they come over for self collection and then she'll pass it to them. But otherwise all the customer contacts or whatever it's all through me. Very good. Um so everybody contacts me all thing and I obviously I can't trust anybody to make the product. So <laughs> but I that, make that all changes of them the myself. quality then so that makes sense. That yeah, makes that's a lot right. of sense. So all the products are made by me and then I'll if when I'm coming over to Australia and then I'll just leave it there so that there's somebody to manage it uh in terms of delivery and things right. like that. Yes. So and, as far as yeah. um so you have to have containers to put all these things in. You have to have your branded stickers and everything and then you have to have the ingredients mm-hmm. to mix everything. So the mm-hmm. I don't want you to tell everybody where you got it from, but what I want to know is how long is that process because it's not an easy thing. You have to vet a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. So um I don't want to go too adventurous and get too much of stuff like I right. mentioned before. So I just get small quantities to test out first because I spend a lot of time researching and trying to figure out of the recipes and you know how uh what for example for oils or essential oils there are so many types that yes. you need to know what works on your skin what's right. going to be suitable for different skin type and all these kind of things and what would be one oil that's going to suit any skin type you know those kind of things right so, because everyone has and, their preferences some more Yeah, correct. And the thing is you also try to see how you can like for example product A and product B and obviously there will be in, uh, ingredients which are going to be used uh similar ingredients which you could right. use in both of them. So that kind of saves you from buying so many ingredients. You can try to recreate things or create new things with existing ingredients which you already right. have mm-hmm. and you know just maybe put in a few different other things. So in that way you don't have to like spend so much trying to buy so many ingredients and you know and I usually calculate how much I would need for the amount of products that I'm going to do. So when I'm finished I don't have any ingredients with me anymore. Right so, so then you buy brand new batch. I don't have to yeah I don't have to you know um keep them or store them and uh perish their quality and things like that. Very cool. I'm actually really glad that you're saying all this because yes people I don't know how they get these ideas in their head but honestly the simpler you make your business the easier it is for you like stress wise first yeah. of all and you keep getting excited because once you finish one set of inventory you make another set and you just you know you just keep on yeah, with yeah. that so at least it's not right. like you made 13,000 mirrors and you're figuring out how to sell them or something crazy <laughs> so yeah. um correct so you started in sec 5 you said basically at, at the age of 17 yeah, you've been basically that. making and drawing and having fun with this whole yeah. business how long have you been online because i mean i'm sure if social media has helped people will dm you with mm-hmm. you know how they feel or how they can get a, a hold of the products has that helped you expand do you think yes definitely because i think pretty much from the beginning it was always online <laughs> because okay. how else i'm I, how else am i going to get the appointment so facebook and things like that and now Thank God Singapore has Carousel. So yes. with that mm-hmm. you can it's very easy to you know just list your products and then right. get people to and there's no pressure because you don't have to pay for the site or anything so you don't right. lose anything and whenever people need something they just you know contact you and the app doesn't take any commission off you as well. So okay. that's really easy and um it's only been recent since I started on with the skincare products like last year that's when i actually launched every skincare uh product wow. that you actually see on my instagram yeah. so that hasn't been too long um i the reason why i decided to do that was also because i was doing really well with my henna before i came to australia because it's been about 4 years now since i've been here I've, i only go back every back and forth. um like summer holidays so that's like once a year mm. and during this 3 year period there's a lot of new artists who have branched out you know so like those people over here i was here now right. it's like that just because okay. i'm like missing in action right, so right. i was Absolutely. like you know you need to hype up and i've only got one more year left with uni 
um in australia so which means i'm going to go back next year so right. i was like how am i going to you know bring up the hype back people still remember my brand i do yes. but the thing is definitely not as much as how my, uh it used to be because of If you the level here, of activity yeah. and you know yeah. yeah i had it always feels really bad turning down so many you know bridal appointments just because you're not there yeah <laughs> so i understand i was like you know you, yeah you need to do something so that your name is like floating around and it's just nice by the time you come back people will still remember you also for some other thing and that's when that skincare idea came about that's the okay. reason why i launched all this thing last year so that um it will be ongoing for a year yes. and it will be just nice for me to come back next year so it will build the reputation of the skincare you know, part yeah correct. by the time you come back correct Got it. and and then they will also like oh yeah this girl i remember you know she used to do henna as well uh you you create like something just so that people don't forget you even yes. if you're not physically there Yes, yeah. absolutely. And that's something that's important. So you start with what you know and then as you go along you see what else is needed and how you can fill mm. that gap. So I'm curious now, mm. you're studying podiatry. How will that fit into your business? Or have you uh, have you considered that? It yet? probably can. <laughs> this is two different things. <laughs> Before this I was doing biomedical science, so I've always been in the health science field and okay. this is a totally different thing. So I probably maybe you could put it this way that is like profession and this is like passion you don't okay. want it to clash because okay. you don't want to be bored of your passion if you okay. do you know make it really full time so obviously i despite uh, you know even if i were to work on my henna or anything related to my business for like 24 hours i'm not going to get bored of it for sure but yes, if i were to you know study 24 hours for podiatry I'll be like exactly. when can I just go to bed? <laughs> exactly. So, so I don't want to curious. lose that with yeah. The podiatry part of it that's going to be like the 9 to 5 part of it once you finish yeah. studying and then uh correct. this will be on the side stuff. So. Okay, very cool. Very correct, cool. Correct. So you know, wow. you don't that's, that's a lot of it's work. not just one thing where you have to, you know, oh, it's just work and that's body. I don't have time for anything else. You know, yeah. I don't want to go into that kind of a situation, especially in Singapore. I think the majority of the people are facing that right now. They don't, they can't find time to, you know, do what they like. Exactly, and that's part of the reason I wanted to get you on here because you found something that brings us big. When you talk about it, you have this big smile on your face. You look very excited because you're talking about, you know, how you came up and you remember all these things, and that's great. And yeah. I want people to realize because what people forget is once you get into a job, sometimes you. You know for a fact, I don't know if you've actually worked a job in Singapore yet or not, but I know, but you know, you work 9 to 5, you clock out 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or whatever. That doesn't end there. You still get emails, you still get calls, you know, you have people that still need you and it's like you're not at work, but you're still working and it kind of takes over mm-hmm. your life. And they get upset if you say no, I'm at home, I have a child, yeah. all these things. In the US you can't do that. There's like HR laws for that, but in Singapore it hasn't kind of caught up that side. So I'm glad you're saying what you're saying as far as Yes, you want a nine-to-five job, but you also want this passion already established. And right now, the mm. way you've had it established, because you're already studying in in Australia, right? You already know you don't need to make, but so often because it's still ongoing. But it's not like, yeah. oh my god, it ran out. Can you come back and make? It's not like that. You know what I mean? Mm. So you you figured Correct. out that Correct. that that formula yeah. for how to manage both already. So I think you're in good mm. shape to be able to manage both the job and the passion because you um you've worked it through university overseas already. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. So next year you're coming back, huh? Yes. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know because it's like you know you've always <laughs> had something to <laughs> you always have something to do or okay it's holidays and I'm going back and I I've, I've got to study and things like that but now it's like okay now what I've already done everything uh I don't really want to you know step into the working world so fast because I know then. That's pretty But much see, you've bought world. yourself time. <laughs> you've bought yourself time because you have a thriving yeah. business anyway. So even if you do come back and maybe you take six months to just like de-stress mm. from all the studying you did, you would be like, "All right, well, you know, I can because I still have my my henna business and Ancient Touch with all yeah. the skincare coming up. Correct, correct. You can come check it out and go like maybe mingle with um, the bazaar. Like you can do market research again and see what's the next big thing that you might be able to start off yeah. with." before you hit the job. So I think you're in a good position and this is a great story because the people that we're going to share this with, the University of uh, South Africa, 
mm-hmm. uh, Cape Town is because they're actually in their final years of university and they're worried oh, okay. about, okay, how do I get a job? What do I do next? How do I, right. you know, my mother made me study engineering, but I'm really not interested. What do I do? How do I change it? You know what I mean? So the, right. the series that I'm doing at the moment is with different kinds of people and everyone looks different. They're from different countries because the last thing I want is I did a series and these people in South Africa are like, yeah, but I'm not like them. So I can't, you know what I mean? So I'm mm. doing as many different kinds of people as they possible. Can't relate to, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So no excuses. You have the internet, you have things around you. You started with something you already knew. Uh, you started with Hannah, mm. then you realize, okay, well, I don't like what's out there. Let me create the, the kind that I want, the quality mm. that I want. And you've kind of yeah. figured it out for yourself. So I'm actually very excited for you. Even after your studies, Thank you're you. in really good shape. You, I think you, without knowing, you kind of planned it very well. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's always nice to just keep yourself busy, you know. So I know once I step into the working world, it is going to be a challenge, you know, trying to sort that out, do my own studies for, you know, um, because in my field, I need to always keep up with the research and things yeah. like that. It's not like, yes. it's the not like okay, therapy, I can now chuck whatever. my books aside. <laughs> yeah, it's not like, it's as good as you being a foot doctor. That's pretty much, it's just I don't have the doctor title and yeah. that's about it. So it's like you need to, you know, do your constant study, keeping up with research and all these kind of things. So it's not like as easy as, you know, okay, I'm done with uni, I'm done with exams, I can now throw away all my notes. It's not, it's not and that another one of thing, those fields. As soon as you finish uni, doesn't guarantee that you get a job right away. Sometimes it's going to take a little while to find the right fit, the right people that want But the good thing you. is, but the good thing is with my degree, they are pretty much in shortage for Singapore. Oh, good. Okay. So... So that's the advantage that so I have. So you planned that too? Uh, with this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pretty much plan it. Um, I actually, it's, it's a funny thing how I got into this field. Tell us. Uh, I actually have always been in health field. So okay, yeah. I wasn't, you know, uh, thinking of switching fields or whatever. Yeah. But see, I, I mentioned, right, that I used to do biomedical science. And during the internship, I felt that it was too robotic. Like, what kind of a life is this? I just face machines. Nobody talks. Nobody interacts. Nothing. Mm. I, I, I don't like you it. Look you look know? at data. So I was like, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Forget it. I need something else. I can't pursue my degree in biomedical science and end up rotting in a lab like all these people. Mm. So I don't. I honestly don't know how to do it. So I was like, okay, um, what is something? which where I'll still be someone important <laughs> and not boss her up. <laughs> so when I was trying to figure that out, I came down to podiatry because it is something important. Like I think nobody really bothers about foot care unless we stand really all problem. day long. Like, we should <laughs> like it's so underrated. And in Australia, podiatry is like a big thing. Like everybody goes to it, goes to, you know, podiatry, foot care and all these kind of things. But, I don't think it's that established in Singapore because nobody really talks about it, you know? Like, You're right. They stand in heels all day long and then suddenly wonder why they cannot spread their toes or they have knee problems <laughs> because they don't yeah. use the muscles in their feet or whatever. Yeah, I can imagine. So, yeah. Right. Because it's you like planned it without planning problem, it. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> any problem, they'll probably just go to the doctor Regular instead doctor, of yeah. finding a light health. So, yeah. that needs to change in Singapore, to be honest. <laughs> I see you changing a lot of things already, La. Really. <laughs> no, but this is good because, I mean, with TCM, you know that there are so many pressure points in your foot as well. You're already in the, you know, the natural health and wellness line anyway. Who knows? Mm. I have a feeling you're going to find a way to connect the two anyway. <laughs> Maybe in future. I have no idea at the moment. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> One thing at a time. It'll come to you. I promise it'll come to you. Nothing happens by accident. I really believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's anything you had to take away from like this whole journey, like business first, then studies and trying to, you know, make sure that when you come back home, you've got something going on already. Like if you had to teach someone something who's maybe just now getting ready to go into uni, what would you tell them? Like two things that you would tell them maybe. First thing, I will be honest. There were times that I actually thought, you know what, maybe this isn't the course for me. I think I want to drop up. Okay. We all had that phase, you know? Yeah. I was like, maybe... I made the decision too quick because mm-hmm. out of poly, I just went right into uni. There wasn't a gap or anything. Within a month, I was already in uni. 
Okay. So I was like, did I rush into this decision? Like maybe I should have taken something business related or maybe like skincare related, something yeah. more aligned with. So maybe I don't regret it now that I mean nothing comes easy, you see. So no. probably just have that, you know, thought like is this something you really want to do? Would you be happy doing this for your rest of your life? Right. You know, that would be yeah. one thing before you go into uni. <laughs> And then after that, yeah. I think sometimes I do have a habit of, you know, planning way ahead like when I was in secondary school, I already know that I want to do uni, you know, overseas. So, right. it kind of I have that plan and mm-hmm. I try to stick by it along the way. So that okay. is pretty helpful as well. Try to yeah. plan ahead. um and have realistic goals of course <laughs> i think actually the Not planning because, part is very yeah. well trained into your brain with singapore because i mean you already know like when you go mm. into uh, primary school you know what to expect in secondary school because they already tell you you have to be banded you have the psle blah 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 like they're already telling you correct, what correct, to plan correct. for right so that's correct. something i think we're raised with but where you were talking about making sure that this is something you could do for a long time that's really important mm. i think because you don't want to do it because your father says so or your mom says so or whatever you yeah. need to you know <laughs> you need to you need to love what it is and a lot of times i feel like obviously we're not equipped to make the kind of decision of what we want to study we kind of have to go and try it and see okay i like the material mm. i don't like the material something you try first so i think that's that's yeah. really important as well you see if i didn't had that internship during my holidays to the yeah. you know let Mm. I would have never known what it would be like to be a lab tech. And right, and if, you would have you know, happily kept going so, in that track. <laughs> <laughs> thinking like, oh, maybe this is normal and I, it's just me who's overthinking. So I think if you feel like, me, uh, if you have the doubt that is this a suitable profession, maybe, you know, try shadowing someone, go for internships yeah. or try to look at something just to know, have a feel of what, what it it's really going to be like. like. Mm. Yeah. And then, because what you're going to learn in uni is, I guarantee it's only five percent is realistic <laughs> for the real world. Yeah, things which you get marked down for in uni, it's was it's what the real profession uh, professionals are practicing. You know, so I wonder why there's a things. gap, but it's very true. It's very true. A lot of it in the classroom is all theory, and then when you go to do things, mm. right? They do it a different way, but that's not the way you were taught. Correct. And you're like, correct. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I agree with you. It's something yeah. I've taught a lot of mentees as well. When you're going through university, you have the summers off usually, right? In the summertime, go mm. get an internship. Go get a quick job somewhere. Mm. Something simple, close right. to the whatever you're trying to do and do as many as possible yeah. in those summers. So then by the time you graduate, yeah, yeah. right, you have a really good idea of what you don't want. At least what you don't want. I don't know if you'll find what you do yeah. want, but you definitely know what you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because once well, you start working, then, I mean, it's not exactly too late, but you rather want to make the move before you start right. the, the last thing world. you want to do is come out of university and say yes i'm ready you jump into the job and you're like oh my god why did i study this and then you feel yeah. like you wasted a lot of time and that's Correct. like the hardest thing to look back on but i mean it it happens right so many people have done that already mm. so because we know and we're we're doing it right now or we've done it already i've already <laughs> done it so i'm just letting you all know i'm glad you said that be humble don't wait to be an influencer there are so many things you can do right around yeah. you don't invest a bunch of cash like you mentioned correct because correct, then it would be correct, the excuse correct. for why you you didn't you didn't succeed because you bought the wrong things would be the next excuse so just just mm. do what you can with what you have yeah that's correct well i want you to if know that you are very good, inspiring it's, it's good stuff people will come to you you don't have to be you know popular in order to sell your right. products if it's good products people will come to you word, word of, of mouth, mouth is probably the best thing compared to being a celebrity then if you're a celebrity and you end up endorsing bad products then that's one thing exactly. one bad move is good Because enough to bring you because they're paid down. they're paid yeah. to endorse a lot yeah, of times yeah, and a lot of times correct. they don't have a say in whether you can say yes or no to the endorsement because it's mm. money the agent is bringing in whatever mm. so yes absolutely mm. if you can stand for quality why not and if you yeah. can create the quality why not <laughs> yes <laughs> you are very inspiring i really really Thank appreciate you. you taking the time i am proud of you for still studying and doing this at the same time Thank i know you. i haven't known you that long but i look forward to meeting <laughs> you in person and seeing yes. how you grow your business Thank you very much and thank so you for this you, opportunity as well of course of course i'm i'm very excited <laughs> so you guys if you're not already following please do yourself a favor and follow ancient touch okay 
and make sure that you keep up with everything that she's doing. It's ancient touch with one T on the A N C I E N T O U C H. Okay. So you follow her, you see what she has、uh, available. Don't forget there's an open house coming up next week. I'm sure you'll post about it on your page anyway. So、yeah. come check it out. See her in person. There's a lot that can be said about meeting the owner of quality products to see what the, the energy is like. And that's why I wanted actually to get you online because I、mm. know that people talk about your products, but they need to see exactly how humble, how spirited you are. You're knowledgeable because you care about the knowledge that you're putting out, the, the products that you're creating. And I think that's really important. It's not like, oh, I, you know, I bought from China, so I'm shipping now and it's working. It's not like that. You're actually <laughs> hand mixing、no. everything. And that's really、yeah. important. It's very important. I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much for letting me talk. Thank you very much. You're welcome.、Thank、I'll talk you. to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye bye.